for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. All right, everybody, welcome back. We are the Pleb Underground YouTube show. Joining us today, we've got a very special guest from Team Satoshi. We've got Vitas Zeller, and he's going to talk to us about the awesome bike competition that, uh, that he did in the spirit of Bitcoin. But first, we are going to go over to, of course, you know the deal, right? We've got Walton over here as well. Walton. Do we have do we have anything today? A rap, a rhyme, something? I mean, th you know, th this week, despite government policy, the Bank of England is trying to save the pound. You're back. Another episode. We've got Fetus, Phil. I'm Walton. This is Pleb Underground. I love it. I love it. He comes up with them right on the spot. Okay. Okay. But look, before we take Vetus through the Hopium, the shitcoin corner, the numbers... Well, you know what? We're going to go take a look at the numbers. <laughs> the numbers, of course, brought to us by timechainstats.com. That's timechainstats.com. Our boy Ant, that's right. Okay, here we go. Let's go take a look at the numbers. At the time of this recording, the block height is 756,418. The Bitcoin price, 19,672. The total public lightning capacity, 4,912. Dot 65 Moscow time 5085 and the chain rewrite days 806. So we've got the numbers, it's uneventful. Walton, before we start taking a look at some fun stories, you got anything? Yeah, I'll do another number. Uh, apparently, uh, and this is this is for TC because I know he has this this fetish, but uh, stack chain. Um, uh, seems to be doing very well, um, and uh, Mr. Corey uh, uh, was, was spent six grand on a Bitcoin the other day, picking up three consecutive blocks. Um, Stack Chain apparently now has um, bought over a thousand Bitcoin uh, by uh, someone's calculation. I don't know if that's true. I've not yet verified, but um, apparently uh, the, the plebs are trying to act as a whale, um, even if like it's basically an NFT chain. Anyway, I really don't know much about the stack chain. I see a lot of stuff on Twitter. It looks interesting and I see a lot of memeing going on. So I know that that's a good thing because that's going to bring about some entertainment. But otherwise, I really know nothing. But at some point, I think we should bring somebody on that from the stack chain to explain to us the stack chain. Yeah, maybe we'll get TC, TC to come talk about it. Okay, cool. Vetus, are, are you aware at all of the stack chain? Have you seen? I mean, don't get me wrong. We are Twitter degenerates. So all we do is sit on Twitter. So yeah, you could just, you could let us know. If you haven't heard about it, that's perfectly fine. No. Nope. No. Haven't heard it's, about it's it. It's only us. It's only us. So basically Bitcoin some, some guy started by buying five, $5 of Bitcoin. And then the next person bought $6 of Bitcoin and then $7 of Bitcoin. And they keep posting right. the images. Um, and, uh, but, but, but to me, the images, um, then they're, they're not, uh, verifiable and so therefore uh, stack chain is a shitcoin uh, even though it is, it, it is a good spirit and it's actually good for bitcoin so maybe maybe shitcoins can be good for bitcoin if they're called stack chain hmm. i think i might have seen cory um post 1999 or something yeah, is that it. related so to that he spent six six grand because he bought 1999 2000 and 2001 all mm -hmm. in, in in one after another nice very <laughs> clever it's not very pleb anymore, though. Like, how many plebs can drop six grand on Bitcoin, like, on, on an off chance? Yeah, exactly, right? Okay, okay, let's, let's, take a look at some, uh, let's take a look at some numbers ridiculousness. Here we go. Uh, all right, guys, they're, they're still trying to convince us. We're, 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 the mainstream media is just absolutely awful. Okay, so here we go. This is a tweet from at uh, Ezra it's, it's a very Levin. useful tool, though, Phil. It's a very useful tool for gaslighting the, the population, as, as we're seeing once again. Totally agreed. Totally agreed. So here we go. Amazon, which owns the Washington Post, has some good news for you. Nice. Seven ways a recession could be good for you financially. Hey, a recession isn't all bad news. Here's seven silver linings. Okay, we're not even going to waste our time going into the ridiculous mental gymnastics that they're going to take us through. But 
the whole point of showing everybody that was the headline. And it's exactly what you said, Walton. It's a gaslighting headline. Okay. I don't see, I, I understand how there are certain businesses that benefit from the recession. So I remember that this is the bullshit that they tried to sell us. Okay. Back in, uh, back in 2008. Okay. Um, the businesses that are going to boom are going to be like the dollar stores. Okay, so if you're, you know, if you own a dollar store or you own shares of a dollar store, then you're probably, you may do very well because people have less money and they think that they're going to go and save money by shopping at the dollar store. Another thing that does really well is scrap metal, junkyards, uh, recyclers. Um, well, what do they call that also? The um, consignment stores. It's like, that's not a silver lining. That's telling you that people don't have a choice but to go and not that there's anything wrong with that okay if you want to go and buy used clothes that's your business everybody's entitled to do whatever they want to do but on average people are doing that either as a fashion statement or because they have no choice you know so i i just you're not going to convince me that a recession is good and i think that this is just absolute nonsense and gaslighting well, first we'll go to vitas uh before we go to uh, to walton vitas what are you what are your thoughts on this uh, this headline I mean, recession might be good for some people, I guess, um, but not the average Joe, I guess. So um, there's always there was, there's always entrepreneurs in a in a recession that profit from that. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think I don't think this is a valid can be a valid um, headline. Yeah. Would you say the uh, would you, would you say that the uh, the bicyclers would would you say that that's recession proof right because you don't have to save on gas you know you could save on gas you could just ride your bike everywhere so would you say that uh, that that's a kind of like recession win right more people uh, are biking. I mean especially maybe people who don't bike yet they find they they might find it useful to go biking because it saves some money and it uh, they could stack some health and uh, strength <laughs> but it's See? harder so there to, you go. to there, there, it's harder upside. to guard All right, the property rights it's hard to guard property rights of of bicycles in in comparison to say uh, motor vehicles um, simply because they're so light uh, and, and can be you know cut through or taken and carried off um, nonetheless yeah re recession um, will mean lower prices so it depends if if, if you have um, if you are actually providing real value in the world and selling that value rather than just being some small cog in a large machine um, you probably um, will be okay but it's you know it, it, there's there's weird kind of structural things that happen you, you know there's going to be there's going to be blood on the streets um uh you know the world is there's not headed in in a, in a good direction but this gaslighting has has been is the latest part of a, a series right that they started with it's transitory mm. that's right it's transitory and you know what that that is a perfect pivot onto our next article, right? Because talking of what? pivoting, the Bank of England's already pivoted. Um, you know, but, hey, you know what's coming. We, we've been talking about this. Is that like that Austin yeah. Powers meme where where he's he's stuck in the corridor going backwards and forwards? And um, this is going to be central bank policy over the next five ten years globally to bounce between fighting inflation and fighting recession. So the recession is, you know, could be good for you, as we just saw. But not only that, at the same time, at the same time, because they're right, mentally preparing everybody for the, uh, the, you know, the the world of the the revolution of lowered expectations. Okay, here we go. CoinDesk. This is a CoinDesk article. Bitcoin recovers some losses after Bank of England's bond market inter uh, intervention has the crypto community betting on an eventual Fed pivot. That's right. Somehow, somehow, Bitcoin just got tied to the Bank of England's mad dash at trying to save itself, essentially emptying one pocket to fill another pocket. So Bitcoin recovered from daily lows after the Bank of England said it will take steps to address the liquidity crunch in the government bond market. Don't get me wrong, but that, you know, I understand that people see the price action and they think that it's related, but Bitcoin doesn't give a shit about the Bank of England. <laughs> Like this just it, this is just people. This is just people and emotions moving the market. Okay. Anyways, the uh, the Bank of England on Wednesday morning said it will begin to buy long dated gilts in unlimited. There we go. The recession is good for you. 
we are going to do everything we can to keep this this thing from falling apart. Okay, so long dated gilts in unlimited quantity starting on Wednesday to stabilize the UK's bond market. Okay, look, I am not on the other side of the pond, so I'm going to start first with Walton. Uh, Walton, I mean, this so, just sounds this this just sounds no different than the U.S. government. It sounds no different than Argentinian government. It just sounds no different than multiple governments around the world who essentially have to keep their currency and their country from financial collapse. So that's it. So essentially, what we have, and 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 I'm just going to abstract the idea because it, it's the same everywhere, right? We have step one. Um, some people get elected by promising various things that they may or may not deliver on. Um, but essentially, these are people, you know, with high political quotients, manipulate people, say whatever to get into power um, or to stay in power. Um, th these these people then um, do make promises uh, and, and and do start spending spending money. But it's not money that they're taking in via tax receipts. It's it's far more than that. And so what happens is to remove accountability from these individuals, um, the, the the central bank of that country buys the the sovereign debt from from the government, uh, essentially printing new money to do so. Um, and and this is this is kind of you know the I think the the biggest. The biggest problem in society today is this complete lack of accountability um, in the in the public political sphere um, and how that permeates, you know, through society. Fear, um, I think, removes um, uh, or, or rather delays, shall we say, um, accountability. Um, and I think what, yeah, what, one great thing about Bitcoin is that is that we have that that accountability. We have that verifiable accountability um for all to see you know you can anyone can run a node very good point and actually before we go to vitas to, to get his thoughts before we move on to the um uh the the shitcoin corner um it always makes me think of the thought uh, of the, uh, the the saying uh robbing peter to pay paul but in this case i think we're just robbing peter and to pay peter <laughs> i don't think there is paul i don't even think paul exists so Anyways, uh, Venus, what are you? Interestingly, uh, briefly, Peter um, um, means the rock, right? Uh, and 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 what 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 do we need to do with these people? They need, they need to be stoned, of course. So Ahmed, <laughs> you're terrible. Uh, that, now we have to pull out the get the stones meme. Okay, Venus, what are your uh, what are your thoughts on the Bank of England? I mean, it just sounds like it just sounds like they're kicking the can down the road and they don't know what to do either. What are your thoughts? Yeah, totally. Uh, it sounds a bit like back then when uh, Mario Draghi, I think it was, uh, said whatever whatever it takes, um, you know, we'll do whatever it takes to save the currency. It's kind of like what it sounds, uh, what the Bank of England does. At the end of the day, it's um, kicking the can down the road, as you say. Yeah, it, it really is. Un it really is unfortunate. But we, we can see that these people, they don't really have a big bag of tricks. OK, like I, I remember back in the 80s, they, they would talk about them. You know, the, you, you would see all these economists and, you know, the government would tell you, oh, you know, we've got these tools. We've got these financial tools. In the end, all these financial tools were is printing money. And and it, it just didn't seem apparent to me uh, at growing up or being a, as when I was a teenager. But it's, you know, it's clear as day now. Anyways, anyways, we are going to move right on over to the shitcoin corner. The Shitcoin Corner is brought to you by RepresentLTD.com. They outfit the Pleb Underground. I've got the hoodie on right now, and I've also got one of the brand new t-shirts. Very nice threads, excellent quality. Don't forget to check them out, RepresentLTD.com. As I was just telling Walton and our guest Vetus, um, it's about to get very dirty here in the Shitcoin Corner. So let's uh, let's dive right into it. This is this is a little bit more of the uh, the World Economic Forum. Um, I, I find the um, you'll have nothing and you'll be happy that supposedly they never said, but for some reason everybody captured and then they just pretended that they never said it and that they never said build back better and that they never said any of the things that they said. Haha, we were joking. We never said any of those things. Klaus Schwab isn't real. Okay, why do I say this? I do agree here with at David Slavic. Incredibly depressing. Here we go. This is a tweet from at yo. They said you can't buy a nice house for under 300K in Miami. 
but I just locked up a 4,000 square foot six bedroom home for only 290k. Phil, this is a joke, right? This this isn't I, real. I can't I'm believe be a this. This is in the this metaverse. is not real. This cannot be real. I mean, obviously course, it's fake because it's the metaverse. Sci does as always, but but yes, Walton. Unfortunately, unfortunately, man, this seems unless somebody can tell us different, this seems legit. And when I say legit, I mean I'm none of it's legit, a, right? That 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 a person possibly wasted almost 300k on a house that doesn't exist in a place that doesn't exist. Okay, <laughs> so so don't get me wrong, but no one should be cheering this. Okay, no one should be cheering this. No one should be applauding this behavior. This is ridiculous crap. Okay, no one no one should be spending 300k. I really hope that it's a troll, and if it is a troll, it is a fantastic troll. Okay, it is yeah, a really fantastic so. troll, and it just goes to show, it just goes to show how easily a fool and their money are separated. <laughs> Anyways, Walton, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's it's basically it's just an NFT, right? This, this is, it, it, I mean, it looks better than a lot of NFTs, but I, I still don't understand how 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 do people end up being smart enough to make hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars? to then put it into this kind of shit. Like, what the fuck is happening, Phil? This is just, it's just degenerate behavior. Um, and what a weird thing to flex about. Like, grow the fuck up. Like, stop watching Marvel films, get in the gym, stop being a child, grow up. It is a weird flex. It totally is a weird flex. Venus, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> um well um metaverse uh real estate is definitely a shit coin <laughs> i would even say normal real estate is most of it is a shit coin but um definitely what do we metaverse say around here, phil what do we say around here fuck shit coins but <laughs> but hold on venus I, I i have to i have to ask i i wonder um why why didn't you guys choose to just make an nft of the uh the the, the bitcoin logo on the map and just instead of actually biking um, you know, you actually, to we've been told to do that, <laughs> uh, but uh, we believe in proof of work, you know. <laughs> and there it is, and there it is. We believe in proof of work. Oh gosh. Okay, no, I appreciate that. Great response. Great response from our guest, who I'm sure we're, who I'm sure we're creeping out right now. But that's okay. That's okay. All right, we're gonna move on to the uh, Walton. Unless you have something else about that amazing investment I was, I was actually opportunity, thinking you could. So I, I'm kind of a math guy. So like, I was actually thinking you could actually work out your work done for the journey. Um, so like, you you can do it's 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 the force times the distance traveled in the direction of that force. Um, is is the work done the useful transfer of energy? You could actually calculate your work done for your for your journey. I like that. And let's probably face it, roughly, you, yeah. With, sorry. Roughly, roughly, you could yeah, calculate. I mean, sure, it. you could you could all or you could. I mean, yeah, you could measure try and measure power and then you know start doing like i don't know you can calculate or if you know your velocity and you know your uh power or your force you, you know you can do further calculations it, it, it and be more accurate hmm. very good point definitely above definitely above my head um and beyond <laughs> the scope of what i'm willing to do um but I think that I think you bring up a good point, and it actually is true. Whereas with NFTs, you can't calculate any of that shit because there was no work done. <laughs> so, like, there, I don't know how anybody justifies three hundred thousand dollars for a virtual house. There was what virtual work? I don't get it. There's, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing in nowhere. Anyways, all right, moving on. I digress from the NFTs. We are gonna wrap Field, up. Have you ever watched the... Black Mirror? Sorry, have you ever watched Black Mirror. Absolutely, I have. So, so one of the Black Mirror episodes um, is about a kind of metaverse that people go live in, and it's immersive, um, um, and 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 it, and it kind of really gets sold. But yeah, the the you know this was only a couple of years ago, and basically everything from Black Mirror is is, is kind of slowly becoming true. But for people to spend yeah hundreds of thousands in in a meta like are they can they even kind of go and walk around this house like what, what like is there much interactivity like but even still like what are you gonna go do like go sit in the go lock yourself in the bathroom like with your mobile phone and some crack cocaine and like have a hunter biden party or like what are you gonna do like in the metaverse it's ridiculous it is ridiculous you take pictures 
of your your metaverse house and show it to people when you go to house parties or something or when you, you get together take with pictures friends? of your virtual dick and then like send it to like virtual girls or some bullshit like fuck ah uh, now i have to bleep that out <laughs> yeah my bad okay so fucking <laughs> like idiots like out. you can't say that walter what, I, what, I forgot what i'm not allowed to say oh the r word this is my spaces bad. this is youtube <laughs> Anyway, it's okay. All right, all right. Moving on, moving on. You know what? We might leave it just for fun and, and let YouTube and let YouTube get mad. But I did us. say I'll... fucking. It's just after, so you could might be able to like. You know what? Maybe I'll if just leave it. We'll see what happens. Okay. So here we go. Wrapping this up, we've got a tweet from Chris Mattern, and as we can see, Chris is one of those special people that paid that paid for their avatar. It's, a, it's, an, it's an NFT. Very nice. All right, here we go. Not your keys, not your crypto. Uh, that 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 that's already a wonderful start. Is short-sighted, small-minded, and impractical. If we don't create solutions that welcome everyone to crypto, then it won't be anyone's crypto. Ah, oh, he just says it so much. It's terrible, because it'll fall irrelevantly into the annals of history. Oh, okay. Okay. This is like this ridiculous shit coiner narrative that you often get okay that um you have to encourage uh custodial services you have to encourage and and i understand the ease of use okay i i completely understand this you're a spook I, I, I come if from you encourage background. sorry you're a spook if you encourage custodial services exactly you know like you're i mean you're a spook if you could it, it let's let's rephrase that right if you don't understand what the trade-offs are that's part of the problem okay the other piece to this is, is that absolutely user experience is critical, but make no mistake, okay? You do not need to sacrifice where you custody, how you custody your Bitcoin for an a quote unquote more desirable user experience. As more people come to Bitcoin, as more development happens on Bitcoin, these user experiences will come. They will be developed because people will want them. And there's going to be that marrying of the personal responsibility ethos with it because that's part of it, okay? This whole thing, like at the end of the day, right? This isn't about this isn't about freaking unicorns and all this bullshit that these shitcoiners try to sell you. This is about hard money and this is about being able to store your value. So there is gonna be the rubber meets the road point. And there is a certain level of complexity, the same way that there's a certain level of complexity for using the internet, yet everybody can do it now. So that is going to come to Bitcoin. And no, you don't need this ridiculous custodial crap, okay? And this nonsense that not your keys, not your coin somehow impedes on the, uh, Im impedes on the, um, the growth of Bitcoin and its ecosystem. Anyway. So much well, of... So much of the crumbling of society um, that's driven by fiat is around individuals opting for convenience over, um, you know, essentially better choices. Essentially, it's high time preference behavior to be to to to, to only opt for convenient options. Um, you really need to think uh, more long term. Um, uh, yeah, you you can't have. You can't have sovereignty without without individual responsibility. No, you're absolutely right. Vetus, what, what are your thoughts on this before we wrap up the shitcoin corner? Well, um, I believe we live in a time of kind of like a responsibility crisis, you know. Um, people are not responsible for their lives, for their wealth, for their health. For They want um, the state to step in every um, corner of their lives and save them from themselves and their own decisions and i believe that has to change and it starts with protecting your um your own bitcoin or your own wealth with your own keys Vetus, i think you're absolutely right you hit the nail on the head there's too many people they're looking for you know big daddy big mommy government big parent figure government to come and save us and and this is what you know what this all goes back to authority right this all goes back to the the myth the myth of authority and how we we can't imagine we we can't imagine a a future or a present 
without an authority figure to tell us what to do. And we've justified it all in our minds that anything this authority figure does is for our, you know, our good. But as we've seen, that's not really the case. Many Anyways. people have replaced a god with a government that they can essentially treat as a god when actually the government is more like a um, a, a captor that they have Stockholm Syndrome for. The government causes um, most of, if not all of the problems that they uh, seek the government to help them with. Very well said, very well said. We are wrapping up the shitcoin corner and we are moving over to the Hopium. Here's an ode. Another fiat currency croaks. Please run your own node. Buy a cool case from Crypto Cloaks. Now these guys, Crypto Cloaks, sponsor um, the next section, Hopium. Uh, you can see some cool little items that Phil is kindly uh, modeling for us um, here. Keeps his, his entropy dice uh, in the, the honey badger. Um, he also showed us the, the helmet um, sponsoring Hodlinauts. Uh, fight against evil um you can also support the cause uh, by buy one of those hodlinaut helmets or the the cold cold power um and if you use the code pleb underground you can get five percent off uh your purchases once again that's cryptocloaks.com phil i've got a little bit of hopium for you now yes. I, I, one one narrative that i've been i think pushing for a couple of couple, couple of months now is that institutional adoption sorry institutional adoption i misspoke of bitcoin is not about more and more companies putting it on their balance sheets it's about more and more companies getting into offering services and products in and around bitcoin and we see more and more investment in exactly this space um so Big story this week, Strike closing an $80 million uh, funding round for its Bitcoin payments revolution. Funding led by 1031, uh, a Bitcoin a VC firm, Washington University and the University of Wyoming. Uh, and it's going to enable Strike to expand their products and acquire new business partners. Uh, and also on this story... Um, a tweet from a friend of mine, Aaron Wise, highlighting that MicroStrategy uh, is hiring uh, a Bitcoin Lightning engineer. Um, yeah, we see companies uh, that were in the, the, the fiat sphere moving more and more and more into uh, the, the Bitcoin sphere, investing more um, into services uh, and products that I believe um, will drive further adoption, what, whatever whatever that means. But to me, it means more and more people using Bitcoin. Um, I, I think there is, there is this interdependence between companies using Bitcoin, which spreads awareness to their other clients, and then you have um, you know plebs orange pilling businesses, uh, and the and you have these two uh, factors driving the adoption. Um, I I think yeah, it's is it is it is it is it going to be uh, the thing that makes Bitcoin moon tomorrow, no. Um, but is it going to have a positive effect? I think. I think probably. I think um, you know, like Strike isn't isn't all Bitcoin, right? They have some kind of fear aspects to them. Um, but I think um, they seem to be uh, doing good things. Uh, Jack Mallers is certainly um, a great advocate for Bitcoin. Hey, Vitas, do you do you guys have Strike out there? Um, I don't use Strike. Uh, I believe it's not. I don't think, so. it's not, I, I don't not think in, it is. It's not in the UK. It's not in okay. Europe. Um, it's in, a legal thing. So again, it's, it's, right. it's because they because they touch the fiat world. They have to um, jump through all these regulatory hurdles, which or, or moats around around you know established financial fiat business. Right. Okay. Strike has a lot of friends in uh, in Bitcoin Beach, though. Um, I met a lot of people there who who love uh, Check and 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 Strike. Oh, that's yeah. I, I could imagine. <laughs> I could imagine. Um, actually, you know what? Okay, so a couple of things on this. Um, you know, I, I, you know, we were talking about custodial services before and stuff like that. Um, I, I know that you know we cheer. Obviously, we cheer Strike. 
and you know it, it's a huge it's a huge move you know the amount of money that they closed on, on their on, on their series of funding um i did see some commentary on twitter that and i don't know if it was actual i don't know if it was actual tweets or if it was some commentary on coindesk you know explaining how like you know they're, they're going to compete with visa um so look i i hate to burst everyone's bubble um but the reality is is that and this is something i've explained before visa visa owns 20 percent of square right so they're already they are already entrenched in they they are already entrenched in bitcoin payments so i i wouldn't really care so much that that strike you know takes a pie, uh, a bite out of visa's pie but what i'm more interested in is their inroads there because you see they they're not using they're not using the traditional network they're essentially building their own so to speak and it's being built up of lightning nodes with lightning channels now granted we can all have the discussion and the argument that some of these nodes are huge and it introduces centralization yes we all understand this okay like the other beauty of it is is that you can't stop anybody from going and deciding to add as much liquidity as they want to the lightning network anyways but besides that point i like to see it from the angle of it's building out kind of its own ecosystem so I, I i think that players like visa mastercard all of these they're just going to come to they are just simply going to join our playground and that to me is a I, I, look either way i see it as a win i, I definitely see it uh, as a win and, and it's huge for you know it's obviously huge for strike Vitas, any uh, any other thoughts on this? I, I know that you said that you guys don't really have strike out there. Yeah, I can agree with you. I I believe um, in general the the the, the non Bitcoin world has to grow together in a way. In some way, there's need, there need to be inroads. It has to grow together with the Bitcoin world. And strike is a useful service. And uh, I mean, Czech is totally um, a great advocate for the cause. And um, so I believe more and more companies like, like that will um, somehow intermingle with the fiat world. And um, also certainly most of them in a way will get eaten up um, and, and, and just bought by the fiat world eventually. But that in the long term doesn't really hurt Bitcoin. Um, I believe it's just um, companies, you know, just becoming companies, becoming bigger natural competition you know like this yeah. is this is the nature of the beast absolutely right so, absolutely one right. day one day and i and rick rick actually confirmed with this with me a few few months back is uh, when crypto cloaks go grows to such a uh, size that uh, you know they're really dominating they're going to buy the onlyfans.com domain just to sell those the fans for for miners um um and and you know their their weird trouser things that they sell so um yeah go rick Cryptocloaks.com. That's right. Use the code pleb underground for 5% off. <laughs> All right. Walton, you got anything else on the hopium? No, I think that's good. Like, I think, good, huh? you know, this, this is what we want. Like, I, you, did, did you buy some more Bitcoin this week? I bought some more Bitcoin this week. Oh, except I didn't. I lost it all in a boating accident. My dog ate the paper keys or whatever you meant to say these days. Um, but Mine yeah, no, hopium. disappeared in the hurricane. Oh, it's, oh yeah, it's gone. The wind took oh, it away. No. My keys, they're just gone. Yeah, he's like hurricane proof. Hurricane, yeah. In fact, what what do you ask? Do steel plates get blown away in a hurricane? Oh yeah. We need we need some hurricane testing, guys. What what what? All of it disappears, Walton. All of it disappears. <laughs> hurricane, hurricanes, so boating in fact, accidents. Yeah. So if you Phil, maybe this is something we need to talk about another time. But how how do you how do you secure your your Bitcoin if you live in a, in an area that has has hurricanes? It's an interesting, interesting concept. I mean, I just explained how mine just flew away. So obviously I am not the best person to ask this question. Um, clearly I wasn't taking care of them correctly and now I have to pay the ultimate price. It's all gone. Um, but look, as soon as I, as soon as I start again and I figure out and I figure out a way, I am definitely going to let everyone know. Okay. We are going to move on from the Hopium and we are going to dive right into our interview discussion with our special guest, Vitas Zeller. Okay, now let's uh, let's give everybody some uh, some context here. Okay, so we've got the this is the Team Satoshi main page. 
Okay, and what's listed over here is Team Satoshi is a sports team. We create awareness for Bitcoin and bring forward the decentralization of money and power. We believe in a world of global, open, neutral, censorship resistant and decentralized sound money for the people. That all sounds awesome. Obviously, I don't want to read the whole thing because we have Vitas here. So we rather just we rather just hear it from Vitas. So tell us about. Oh, what's up? Walton's got the finger up. We will not let Fiat defeat us by Bitcoin. We're talk here to talk about Team Satoshi with Fetus. Look at that. Right on the spot, man. He came up with that rhyme. <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. Okay, so Fetus, um, tell us about Team Satoshi. Um, who's who's part of it? Why did it start? How did you start it? All that sure. good stuff. Um, well, first of all, maybe, um, well, the idea is just basically to bring more awareness for Bitcoin through the platform of sports. Uh, because sports is a you know, has traditionally since hundreds of years actually been a, a powerful messaging tool for, for rulers since the Olympic Games and even before that. Um, so, yeah, I believe um, people look up to athletes, to um, sportsmen uh, and sportswomen. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, I believe sports can be a really good platform to communicate ideas about, um, you know, the world how it's changing and also technology. Um, so yeah, that's the idea about Team Satoshi. Who is part of it? I mean, uh, in my in my own definition, anyone who believes in being fit, healthy, and strong, and who is a Bitcoiner is part of Team Satoshi. Um, so yeah, this is basically the definition of who's part of it. Uh, there's many people um, by now who associate with Team Satoshi. We have some clothes we're selling um at price actually so without um without making any money on it um and uh, yeah that's actually the way i started it was with uh, twitter satoshi it was uh, actually that was the 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 line up here it was from florence to frankfurt um it was a winter bike tour uh started on the on january 3rd 2019 um i started in front of uh, Banco Medici Riccardi, the first bank, 600 years ago, and I ended up at the ECB in Frankfurt. Um, I did it in 10 days, and I tried to pay every night with Bitcoin. Um, so this was basically the beginning, the first event of Team Satoshi. Um, I succeeded out of nine nights. I succeeded seven nights. Two nights I couldn't make it happen, um, uh, but seven nights I could convince uh, hotel owners to take my Bitcoin and return for a room. Um, yeah, and then and then uh, the second event was actually this one, this line here, which was from uh, Zug in Switzerland to Munich, uh, an ultra Ironman um, distance over four days, um, including crossing the biggest lake in Germany, which was a 12 kilometer swim. Um, and then uh, now we just finished the uh, Bitcoin B. So on September 21st, we finished this one. So it started in January. It was nine participants. Um, and we finished up in Strasbourg in front of the European Parliament, but not the one in Brussels. Uh, we finished at the redundant one in Strasbourg. They used okay. to move between the two, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, like for still a few do. months. It's ridiculous, completely ridiculous. Hold on, but hold I, on though. There, I, there was... I really like I really like that you're that you're kind of trying to push into the sports world because one thing I see um is that that sports fans um, many are degenerate gamblers, um, you know, betting on all sorts of things. And so you see the major, you know, gambling websites sponsoring European uh, football, European soccer. Um um, and you also now see, you know, these shit coiners like FTX and Crypto.com buying stadium rights or sponsoring uh, major sports uh, players all over the world. Um, that that these shit coiners are competing for the attention of supposed grown men. Um, but we need to, yeah, we need to, we need to direct uh, their their eyes uh, to the to the real uh, thing, and that that of course is Bitcoin. Um, so thank thank you for your work. Um, how in, in in total um 
how many how many days uh, have you have you spent cycling the B? And will will you be doing an, another vertical line? Uh, to, to, to because I in my, unless I'm mistaken, I think the the Bitcoin B we have we have a second line. So uh, sorry to to add to your journey. So uh, Walton, are you down to join uh, for the vert vertical line? Definitely not a cyclist, <laughs> sir. But um, yeah, I mean, I can I can I can I can lift a couple of weights. So I don't I don't really see how that that that's gonna add yeah. anything to you to your map, sir. A uh, good question. I'm not sure about the second line yet. Um, uh, the total number of days. So Tore Satoshi was 10, then the Satoshi Friathlon was four days. And now the Road to Bitcoin, which just finished now, was 14 stages. However, I was only part of five stages. So um, yeah, uh, there were a few other plebs uh, joining uh, for that one. Uh, also for the second one, we were seven guys including uh, Anita Posh, you might know, or Jeremias yep. Kangas, yeah, uh, who Anita founded well. uh, localbitcoins.com. So uh, we had some plebs for that one as well. Yeah, Anita's uh, somewhat of a Bitcoin missionary, right? She's spreading spreading the word of Bitcoin um, across the continent of, of right. Africa, um, right. who've been subject to a lot of... Um, you know, monetary colonialism, and, and many still are, uh, especially the, the, the former uh, France um, co colony. Yeah, I'm I, I'm still hung up on the two nights that you couldn't convince people to take Bitcoin as payment. And I'm just curious, where did you sleep? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I paid I paid with fiat shitcoin. So oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I was going to say, how much of a trooper are you? Or you were like, no, nah, I'm not using fiat. I'm going to sleep on the bench. <laughs> Well, actually, I, I might have, but uh, it was winter time, um, and I only had clothes. I didn't have a tent with me. It was um, it would have been too much baggage. But actually, funny story. In the first one of those two, it was actually after a hundred and roughly a hundred and sixty kilometers. I was like riding already three hours in the dark because it was such a long stage. And in winter time, you know, the lights, you know, uh, the days are not so long. Oh yeah. My my batteries were out for two two hours already so uh, of the lights so i didn't have any lights so i got to that village it's a small town didn't have too many hotels but i went through uh, all the hotels and then actually i couldn't make it happen and then i went back to the hotel where i thought okay um i want to stay there and then i met the receptionist on the street she was already going home um and i begged her to let me sleep at the hotel because this i i was afraid this is my last opportunity and, to and find i think you were gonna say you you persuaded her to let to let her, you go home with her or something yeah. <laughs> like oh my god this guy is the king they call that checking into the hotel back yourself I mean, she was actually nice. She actually called the hotel owner previously and asked him, you know, can we take Bitcoin? You know, he, he wants to pay with Bitcoin. He's, he's on his mission. So, yeah, it was fun. I met her on the street and then she called the, uh, the um, how do you say, property um, manager kind of uh, who let me into the house, gave me a key, and then I paid next day. That was fun. And so... Cool. Um as far as I'm aware, certainly, I mean, here in the UK, um, that we have you know capital gains associated with with uh, selling Bitcoin at a at a profit. Um, right. How how have you kind of dealt with with this? Um, if if assuming you you live in a jurisdiction where you have uh, capital gains, uh, do you, do you spend and replace Bitcoin? Um, is is it more about um, making sure that you have a greater proportion of of transactions? Um, taking place on Bitcoin rails, um, uh, even if you're not spending net Bitcoin, so to speak? Well, actually, um, I don't spend too much um, of my Bitcoin. But um, for that tour, I got, uh, I actually asked for donations from uh, the, the Bitcoin realm. And I actually just made it with my seven nights. So I got enough donations for those seven nights. So I just paid through the no donations. I didn't um yeah i didn't very cool very cool so the the plebs the plebs funding helped me yeah. spreading the word very nice of yeah yeah it was quite nice it was it was awesome what's the are there any, uh, are there any specific huh? plebs or supporters you you'd like to um just just talk about um anyone who's who's really kind of you know been a, a key cheerleader for team satoshi 
Actually, many. Um, the main uh, the main cheerleader that comes to my mind from right from the beginning is Chaco Motsuko. <laughs> he always uh, retweets everything about it's Team Satoshi guy. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> he loves it. Um, uh, yeah, also, I mean, many, many, actually. Uh, Richard Taylor, Anita, Posh. Um, yeah, uh, actually, Gigi is a, is a big fan. Um, he um, joined the Run for Halfin. We, ha we have a year yearly run for Halfini uh, in memory of Halfin on September 6th. So uh, Gigi is always joining. Um, actually, many people. Um, I, can't, I can't really mention all of them. But um, yeah, the, it's, it's a received uh, very nicely, um, the idea. And uh, I love it. Um, it's a grassroots movement. Uh, and I believe it's, uh, it's growing. And yeah, I love it. Beautiful. I, I gotta I gotta ask what's the uh, what's the deal with the uh, the truck on the uh, on the map? Uh, yeah, that's actually Satoshi Satoshi the van. It's called um, <laughs> Satoshi. So <van. laughs> you you find yeah yeah it belongs to Philip. Philip uh, is a, is a pleb a young Bitcoin pleb. So he joined us for the road to Bitcoin. Um, so he took our bags um, and he helped uh, with the with with nutrition with support. Um, so all the way um, from the road to Bitcoin, he went with his with his um, van and joined us. It's actually an awesome van. It has lots of uh, Bitcoin art on it, and and yeah, you find it at at Satoshi the van on Twitter. Okay, if if you could send me that Very later, cool. I, I'd I'd appreciate it. And also, sure. uh, send do you me have a, a Twitter community? Um, Kind of. So I just recently opened a uh, Team Satoshi Twitter account. It's Team, so at if, team, team if Satoshi O. Twitter, you can create these things called communities that are uh -huh. like kind of mm -hmm. groups um, that you can, you know, bring people into. And maybe then you could you could have a Team Satoshi uh, community or something like that. It's a bit like a group chat, but mm. but but you can have kind of tweets and posts and things rather than just all in a, okay. in, in a chat. Um, and maybe you could kind of create yeah a bit of a because my understanding is you you're essentially a, a, a bitcoin fitness and awareness sorry a bitcoin awareness and fitness community right or right. spreading bitcoin through through athletics yeah right. i think it could be a really good, good nice little tool maybe to um, yeah sounds sounds help, like a spread the word cool idea yeah. what's the uh, what's the next adventure you guys have uh, an, uh, anything in the works yeah actually um running bitcoin so um we're actually working together with fran finney um and we're working on an event called Running Bitcoin, um, called amazing. named after um, uh, Hal's uh, famous tweet. Famous tweet. Uh, it goes from January first to January tenth, um, and basically we're just asking everyone joining to um, walk or run a half marathon, which was Hal's different uh, favorite um, distance. Um, and donate some sats, some sats to the ALS uh, Foundation, ALS Chapter West, um, because Hal um, passed away due to ALS. Yeah. And yeah, so we're asking for donations to that and to join for a half marathon, walk or run during those 10 days. I love it. Really appreciate that. Nice. You got the tweet printed out. Very nice. He's got it. Ah, oh, we can't. We can't see because of the background. Don't there worry. We we're working on Walton's background. I think background. maybe there. Yeah. I, no. I got it's, it from yeah. a. It's not. It's not loading very well. But from yeah. Crypto Graffiti. Yeah, uh, actually, he, he he has these uh, stickers of uh, that exact tweet. So. Yeah, uh, actually, out, Crypto out, Graffiti, Graffiti is. He's he's, awesome he's part of the organization, so he's uh, helping uh, organize the whole event. That is absolutely awesome. Very cool. All right. Um, do we have anything else? I think this, um, uh, Lots of things, but um, but just you know, anyone who's interested can just uh, visit teamsatoshi.org. Good question: Where do you stand on the whole pan debate? As as a keen athlete, I'm sure you you eat um, a good bit of meat. Uh, do, sure. do you prefer uh, cast iron pans or stainless steel? Uh, I prefer cast iron pans. Yeah. He knows. He knows. Yeah, it's good. It's good that you asked the pan question. I, I was debating and I was like, eh, I don't know. He doesn't spend a lot of time on Twitter, so he might just, you know, he already thinks we're crazy. He's just going to think we're totally nuts. <laughs> but um, no, that's all good. All right, guys, this wraps up this week's this week's 
Pleb Underground YouTube show. Don't forget to check us out, plebunderground.com. That's right. We put out daily articles like the meme compilations. We've got Pirates Bear Market Diaries. Um, don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor. If you want to stream us sats, we are on fountain.fm. You could stream us sats through Breeze. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah.